Um, we're recording. Good morning. Welcome to One Life Church. We're excited to be invited into your home and to welcome you into our home. Uh, we're here as a body, uh, as a family of God, and I've got my Bible, brought my Bible to church. Hope you did too. We're looking forward to this time together. Also, we've invited with us in, in this room over here, you'll hear them a little bit later, we've invited our elders and, Porch and Mitch, of course, who is really helping us out with uh, with the website, and we'll hear about we'll hear a little bit more about that in a little bit later in the in our time here together. Unfortunately, Keith and Sandra are unable to be with us as they're they were unable to connect with us here today. So, any of we're going to say bye to them. Uh, just maybe if you guys can all wave to our congregation over here, and we'll see them in a in a few moments. And uh, as I'm just going to share a couple of thoughts here now with you. Um, as you probably noticed that, uh, I'm just gonna disconnect this one over here. Uh, stop, there, there we go, good, all right. As you probably noticed that um, we've all been affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus plague mm -hmm. and therefore find ourselves mostly in our homes like we are here today broadcasting from our home and our families, which really made me think of what's, what is going on in the midst of this or what would make God be doing in the midst of this because you know, the Bible tells in Romans chapter 28, 8 verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And the NIV says, in all things, that God can work something in all things to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. And so I like that this passage, actually, this passage gives us hope, does it not? It yeah. really is talking about hope. And, and, and Paul says, not just in a few things, in all things. How many things? In all, all things. things. And even in, as we find ourselves in our homes over here, God's doing something. We can look, we can, it's easy to look at the negative part, mm -hmm. but what's the positive? What's the good things that God is working in your life? And so I just want to share one thought with you here today that came to my heart as I was spending some time with the Lord on Thursday morning. I said, Lord, what is it that you're doing in the midst of it? And there's a number of thoughts that came and you probably have see some things, but one of the things that really came to my heart was the family. And, uh, and, and, and so, so as we are being confined to our homes in, in some in larger ways and some in smaller ways, and we don't really know what the future is holding. Some communities are totally locked up. You're barely allowed to leave your home. We're not quite there yet, but who knows what may gonna happen before this thing finishes out, right? And yet I see in, in, in the midst of all of this, I, I maybe, maybe God is, challenging us with some things as we meet with our families and i just want to share five things with you maybe it's a challenge us to reflect on what is in really important in our lives during this time and to re reconsider what's really important secondly maybe to challenge us to consider the importance of family as you are meeting together and relationships some of you are single some of you don't have children at home we don't have any children at home we have a dog at home but either or uh, we're still connecting with our children through Facebook and phone calls and so on and so forth, right? Because family is important. But maybe God wants to do something a little deeper than what we were used to, even at this time. And therefore, thirdly, maybe uh, God is challenging us to rebuild the family unit as God intended it, rebuilding those relationships that are really important. I've noticed that the phone calls become a little bit more often than they were before because yes. we're not as busy. And so because we're not as busy, it's like we can reconnect again. It's like going on our holidays. And I know for some of you, this is not a holiday. No. But it's when you are on a holiday. I know when Rose and I, when we go on a holiday, I enjoy it because I get to spend quality, more quality time with her than we were at home. We seem to be busy at home. And so maybe just to reconsider those things and to rebuild that. Fourthly, I think this one is really important. It's probably one of the most important things that we're going to focus on is to challenge us to rebuild the family altar. Mm -hmm. considering that God is one of those, is the one actually who created the family in the first place. And then 50, fifthly, to bring us back to what is really important in life, the family and relationships of all kinds. Yes. And so in the larger sphere of this world, it seems that the family unit has been sacrificed on the altar of prosperity, on the altar of hedonism, on the altar of self-preservation, on the altar of inconvenience, and in some ways, because of the selfishness that may reign in whether it's our personal lives or whether it's in other people's lives, 
and the, the Lord will need to show you that himself. So we're not pointing fingers. I'm just bringing some light to what may have been happening in your life or in other people's lives. And so it's everything is where everything is about me and my happiness. But did you know that that's not really scriptural? It is not. We are so in a, we live in a world that it's, it's all about, it seems to be all about me and our family seems to be, to, 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 our family comes at the detriment of that. But that's not what God intended at all, because even in the, song, in the 60s, in the Psalms, and I believe 62 or 68, it says that God puts a solitary into families. And so his heart is for family. As, you create, as he's created family, his heart is for family. And in family, you and I grow, even in the midst of it, even in the midst of sometimes we're challenged with how to deal with family. And this is where we want to come to God, because God gives us the wisdom to be able to, to do that. And, I, and Jesus said this, that, you know, Jesus is our example, of course. And he said he did not come to be served, but to serve. Amen. His life was all about giving and serving under the lordship of his father in heaven. And we mm-hmm. find that in Philippians chapter 2 and in Mark chapter 10. Therefore, some of the greatest tragedy that has happened is the breakdown of the family due to selfishness and self-focused attitudes which has been one of the major causes of the breakdown of the family. I know when we teach on family and marriage, one of the things that one of the quotes that we use is as the family goes, so goes society. So you see stable families raise stable and confident children, which becomes the strength of a strong and stable society. And what is the first ingredient of that stable family? I've already mentioned it before, but one of them is we look to the one who created the family our Lord God Almighty. And the scripture that I'm actually going to be using, I'm just going to bring it up for you that you can read along, uh, that you can read along with us. I'm just going to share the screen with you over here. And it's found in Psalm 127, verse 1 and 2. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the home, or the family, or your relationships, or the church, they labor in vain who build it. In other words, you're going to be wasting a lot of effort building that family because God is saying, he says, I want to be part of that. We need to partner up with him. And when we do, it's going to be much easier. Or he's going to bring us, give us ideas and wisdom. And and it's able to to be fruitful Mm -hmm. for us to be able to do that. It says, unless the Lord guards the city, our family, our home, our relationships, the watchmen, those that are in charge of the family, the leaders of the family, whether it's the parents, the grandparents, the leaders, even kids and and youth and young adults, they stay awake in vain. In other words, it, 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 it continues to say, it says, it is vain for you to rise up early or to sit up late to eat the bread of the sorrows. And it's talking about worrying and being anxious about, Lord, what are you doing? And he said, can I trust you? And the answer is yes. yes. For so God gives his beloved sleep. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you stability of heart and mind, casting so that we cast our cares upon him, for he cares for us. And that is so cool that the, the Lord wants to do that. And can you see that building, that building relationships, raising a family is a partnership with the Lord as we read this psalm. I love this fa- psalm for the family. You see, you need to do your part, and the Lord is going to do the unseen part of him protecting and watching over your home, Amen. your dwelling place. One of the psalms that we've been talking about the last number of weeks is Psalm 91. We're going to read it. I'm going to ask Rose to read it in, in a little bit over here. But in Psalm 91, verse 10, it says, No evil shall befall your, you, you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Incredible promises, especially in today's day. For he, God, shall give his angels charge over you in all your ways. And let me, let me just share with you a couple of ways that you can partner with the Lord. And these are just examples that have come to me in the last number of days. And one of the moms from our church tells, told me just this week that she proclaims daily as the children leave their home. She proclaims daily. Numbers 26 through 20, uh, number six for 26, 24 through 26 over her children Amen. for their protection, which is the, which is the blessing, the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and so on and so forth. She proclaims that over her children because she believes that. What is she doing? She's partnering with the Lord and Amen. putting her trust in the Lord and, pro- and declaring the, uh, a uh, protection over her children. Another young woman, uh, she's a young woman. Uh, I talked to you this week and just happened to connect with her uh, through through something. And she, uh, when I told her I love Psalm 91, she just lit right up. And she told me, she said, when she was young, 
that her mom made her memorize Psalm 91, Ooh. even though she didn't want to do it, it made it memorize Psalm 91. You While go mom. Be, pardon? You go mom. Yeah, exactly. You go <laughs> mom, right? Interestingly enough, in her teenage years, she said, I was rebellious. I did things you don't want to, <laughs> that I'm not going to talk to you about. But anyway, she said in those days, she would be in her apartment and uh, she would hear noises around the room. And right away, she, it just scared, it would really scare her. And what would come to mind? Psalm 91. Wow. And Psalm 90, she would quote Psalm 91 and declare Psalm 91 over her apartment, even in a backslidden state. And the noises would leave, that the, the fear would leave. And today she says, I'm serving God again. I'm full of fire. Then my daughter, uh, my, one of my daughters, my oldest daughter, had a dream before this coronavirus thing happened. And she didn't even know about it. And beginning to make a lot of sense. Let me just share with you the dream that she had. And it brought so much comfort to myself. And I thought, God, you are so good. Uh, mm -hmm. You are so good. She said, I had a dream where I was at a beach. And other people were there also. But then crows came and tried to take the food from everyone's hands. Crows in the Bible are not good things, all right? They're like the enemy trying to do stuff, right? whether it's through people or whatever. And so it's, it's, uh, so it's trying to do something, right? And so she said, so we all ran to our homes in the dream. And when you got to your homes, all the homes were all upside down. They weren't right side up. They were upside down. But she says, on our house, even though the house was upside down, it says our house, there was a net so the crows couldn't get in. And then she, then she said that at 6 p.m., we were able to come out. And so what the Lord is showing her before this whole coronavirus was already happening, there is going to be a period of time where everybody's going to be secluded to their home and things are upside down. Mm -hmm. But God's protection is over their home. Those that are believers, those that are, those that are, under, and those that are, those that are sons and daughters of the Most High God, those are the ones that believe the word of God. You see, the Bible says, your shield, your truth will be my shield and my buckler, right on yeah. Psalm 91. And that's what she was telling me. She said, Dad, I just feel so safe in my house. But there was also at 6 p.m. We're not sure what that means, 6 p.m. We're hoping it might be June. We hope it might be April 6th. Who knows what that's going to be like. I'm, we're not prophesying that. But there is going to be an end to this thing. But in the meantime, what is God asking us to do? I believe because we're close to family is to reestablish that family altar, mm -hmm. family relationships again, to build that, build that into it. You see, due to our busy lives, the chasing of worldly pleasures, selfishness, and so on and so forth, have we been neglecting in having a family altar time? Mm -hmm. Have we ne neglected what is the most important part of family, directing our children and our families to the Lord? I think God may just be using this worldwide pandemic, this worldwide plague, to pause society for a period of time so that we may consider resetting our priorities in life to what is really important in life, the family, as it was from the beginning of time. Yeah. So Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let's reset our priorities of the importance of the family. Yeah. Have those family meals, those family games, family laughter. Let's enjoy yeah. our family while we can. And let's reset. If there's forgiveness that needs to go towards family members, let, let's just do that. Let's humble ourselves and let's just, let, let's just work on family because it's so important. Amen? Amen. And then let's reset the altar time in our home, the prayers and devotions. Shut off the TV, all the electronic devices, and be and do family time together with the Lord. Invite him in, bring him in, because he's the one who established it, and he will the one, he's the one that will help you with creative and witty ideas and ingenuity on how to help your family, uh, even in a day like this. So let's invite the Lord to become the centrality of our home again, and let's use the pause that is in the world to rebuild the importance of the family. Amen. And so at this time, Rose, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for the family. Amen. We're going to take some few moments of time. And maybe you need to ask the Lord forgiveness. And maybe you feel yourself that say, yes, I've been focusing too much on the things on the outside world. It's not like you can't have a job. It's not like that. It's not like you can't build wealth or anything of like that. That's not what we're saying at all. What we're saying is, is like, how important is the family? Because to God, the family is very important. It's the first institution that God created before he created church or the ecclesia. And so let's just pray. Let's just take a few moments and let's just pray and bow our heads and agree. 
with us together. So, Father, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, as you've laid this message upon my heart, Lord, I thank you for family. You're the one who created family. And, Father, I pray for those families that may be a struggling, Lord God, in relationships, Lord God. Father, may a humility come in all of our hearts, Lord God, towards one another. First of all, towards you to ask us to help us to with family, Lord, to be family and to commune as family, Lord God. The walls that may be there, Lord God, the hardship, the unforgiveness, Lord, may there just be a grace and, and, and a grace that comes into our homes, into our life for one another, Lord God, a tenderness, Lord God, a mercifulness. As you're merciful with us, Lord, may we be merciful with those of around about us in our home, Lord God. That's what I pray for. That's what I ask for, Lord God. Help us to take this time as, this, as the world is paused in a pause, Lord God, to help us to reset the priority of family in our lives, Lord Amen. God, for our spouses, for our children, for our grandchildren, and whatever relationships that we have, friendships, Lord God, the deep friendships, Lord God, that we may, that maybe have gone astray, that we, Father, we may rebuild those friendships once again, because God, you are a God of relationships, and you put the, the lonely into families, Lord Amen. God. Father, put upon our hearts, even those individuals that we may just need to give a call, Lord God, and just to, and just to re reconcile with some individuals, Lord God, that maybe we, you've been prodding us to do so, but maybe now is the time. And so I pray for your grace to be upon each and every one of us as we spend this time together in our homes and families, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. It's very powerful, isn't it? Yes. It's very powerful, right? I don't know. We enjoy our family too. And I'm sure that the people are watching uh, that are in, that have entered into our, that are watching us, um, their heart is for the family too. Yeah. Right. And I know there's those, many tears yeah. that are shed from time to time for family. Right? For, for those relationships that perhaps we, we, we neglect unintentionally. Um, but now's the time to make an effort to invest in those relationships, right. whether it's through social media, because we're not able to be together you know, physically, but to make those connections, to make yep. those phone calls and to have those, you know, FaceTime meetings and, and to invest in those times to be together. Even yep. being here with us this morning, it is so important because it's saying, yep. you know, these relationships matter. This community matters. Yep. My, my, the family of God matters to me and my, my natural family or my family of my, the family of my heart matters. And so we want to make sure that we're investing in those things at this time and we're strengthening those relationships because we all need them. Amen. That's good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ask someone from our elders to come and pray for the um, various parts of uh, things that we're going to talk. We're going to pray for the mercy that God would have mercy in our world today. Amen. Right. And because there's so many people passing away, God's heart is not for people to, um, to, to, to suffer uh, because of this destructive force. Right. And so we need to pray for mercy. So I'm going to ask to, uh, to for Jennifer and Stuart, one of our elders of uh, One Life Church, to come on on, to join us once again, and to take these few moments and just to share a scripture and uh, just to pray for this situation here around the world. So go ahead, uh, Stuart and Jennifer. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23 says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So God's mercy is available to us. Jen, you want to pray about the cosmos? Yes. Father God, on these two scriptures, we just come to you and thank you that we're an ecclesia. We're a people of God that's standing on guard for mm -hmm. our community, for our city, our province, for Canada, and for the nations of the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us your compassion and your mercy. Mm -hmm. They're new every morning. And so we thank you as we stand on guard to put your cross between all viruses, all infectious diseases, and your people. Yes, Father God, we thank you that we can come boldly as an ecclesia into the throne room of God, where your grace is given so freely, that we may obtain that mercy and find grace yes. in this time. So Lord, we just want to thank you and thank praise you. you. Thank we you. thank you. Psalm 23 says, surely goodness and mercy Hallelujah. shall follow us mm -hmm. all the days mm -hmm. of our lives. So Lord, we thank you that goodness and mercy is following us, Father God. 
So we thank you that as an ecclesia, we can declare your goodness, your mercy, your compassion between us and all diseases, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So we just thank you and praise you, Father. Bless your people. Uh, draw them through the Holy yes, Spirit Father. into uh, uh, salvation, Father. into Father. knowing you, Father. and stepping into who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stuart and Jennifer, for doing that. At this time, I'm going to ask um, another one of our elders to come, Cornell and Darlene Friesen, who will be, uh, who can, uh, who would join us right now. And uh, let me just help you with that. <laughs> I'll just unmute you guys, and I'll uh, ask you to start your video again. So there you go. Welcome once again, Cornell and Darlene. And Cornell and Darlene have asked them just to pray for our medical professionals who are in yeah. the front lines of this, and um, and also for a breakthrough that we would get an antivirus uh, for a the vaccine. breakthrough, a vaccine for yeah. that. So go ahead, Cornell and Darlene, and whatever God put on your heart, just go ahead. Morning, everyone. As I was uh, just pondering and uh, reading this morning and journaling, uh, just a couple of verses came to me, so I just want to share that first. And the first one is in Psalm 91, verses 14 to 16, and I know this will be a duplicate with Rose later. But it says here, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And also at the end of uh, Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. And also I wanna just finish off with uh, at the end of Psalm 93 verses three to five. The flood has lifted up, O Lord. The flood has lifted up their voice. The flood lifted up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. Now, let's just agree together in, in prayer. I'm going to pray, and uh, let's just agree together for, for wisdom, for all the doctors and all the scientists. So thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, and that your presence goes with us wherever we go, and that we have the mind of Christ and we just thank you, Lord, that we hear your voice and that we have your word. And because we have hid your word in our heart, we will not fear this morning. And right now, Father, we just thank you for wisdom, for all of the people working on a vaccine for this uh, yes. coronavirus, yeah. Lord. We just thank you for giving them wisdom, for giving them your mind, that you would give them creative ideas, things that they haven't seen, things that seem to be hidden, and because this is a silent enemy, Lord, it's been said many times, but Lord, it is because it is silent, because it is hidden, that you would expose it. You would expose it to the scientists. You would expose it to the doctors and, and the people that are working on us, the whole medical field, Lord. We just thank you now in advance, Lord, for what you will do and what you will reveal to them. We thank you, Lord, that you will, will show them the things that are hidden and you will give them a breakthrough in this area so they will have a vaccine quickly so that the people around us in our nation and other nations, we know this has traveled around the world, Lord. So we just thank you that, that you're providing insight into this and a breakthrough now in Jesus' name. We all agree, agree together. And your word says, wherever there's two or more gathered in your name, you are in the midst of them. And also that we can come into agreement and there is power in agreement for your word, Lord, to just come up with a vaccine now in Jesus' name that would uh, stop this thing in its tracks and that we could return our lives to normal in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Th thank you, Cornell and Darlene. And um, I'll just, uh, yeah. Good. I'm gonna ask um, Kent and Donna to come on up there. Another one, uh, Kent and Donna are also part of our elder team. So uh, welcome Kent and Donna. And I'm going to ask them to, that through this time over here, the turmoil that mm -hmm. is happening in the world, that we would see a great salvation, people turning their hearts to God, 
uh, who is able to help them. So uh, Kent and Donna, go ahead and, um, and just take your time. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, Donna has a few scriptures she'd like to read, so I'll turn it over to Donna for a minute. Well, this morning I was reading in the Word, and um, I got the most classic uh, scripture on salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And Romans 10, 9, 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thanks, Donna. Um, you know, uh, Pastor Wayne this morning has been talking about family, and perhaps uh, some people have joined us this morning that uh, don't have that family feeling that... Uh, maybe they're not sure that they're a part of the family of God. Uh, we all gather together every Sunday, and uh, we are assured of one thing, that we are in the family of God. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to pray, pray a simple prayer of salvation. If you've never prayed this prayer before, or if you're not sure of your salvation, I invite you to join along with me as I pray. And uh, when we're finished, uh, you will have that salvation, that you know that you are a member of the family of God. So, Lord God, we just come before you this morning, Lord. First and foremost, Lord, I recognize, Lord, that we are sinners, Lord God, that we fall short, Lord, that we have not met up to what it is that you desire for us. But, Lord, we also recognize that Jesus died on the cross for us, that he gave his life so that we could have salvation. Salvation is so simple, Lord. You've said in your word that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that we will be saved. So, Lord God, today I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord God Almighty, that you are uh, the, the salvation that we see. And Lord, I speak that forth, and I believe it in my heart. And Lord, I pray that you will take up possession within me, Lord God, uh, that you will take control of my life, lead and guide and direct me for the rest of my life, Lord. I just pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want you to know that if you've joined with me today with that prayer, that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you too are saved. And as of today, guess what? You're a member of the family of God. And I just want to thank you for joining us. Uh, Pastor Wayne, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kent and Donna. That was awesome. Man, it just, it just really touched my heart there, Kent and Donna. That was awesome. And just want to thank our elders for yes. just partaking here and it just so touching myself and uh, even as they are, we're praying here this morning. So thank you guys for helping us with that. Um, at this time, I uh, just want to let you know that uh, during this past week, uh, if you're part of One Life Church, over, uh, if you want and viewing, viewing us this morning, that we have asked our leaders to connect with each and every one of you. If you've not had a phone call by this time, would you just please let us know? And yes. you can uh, email info at onelifechurch.ca. That is info at onelifechurch.ca. And we will make sure that somebody is going to contact you, all right? We want to make sure that our body is loved on, cared for, and if there's any needs that we could help you with, to let us know about that. And again, the email that you are able to use is info at onelifechurch.ca. Yeah. At this time, I'm going to invite Mitch in, and Mitch is uh, helping with it, me with the technical part. And thank Mitch, you. why don't you come on in? And um, we just see you there. So uh, thanks, Mitch. Hi there. He's the guy with the, the big thing on his head there. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch has been working with me, helping to upload stuff on the, on the uh, web and the uh, Facebook. And we're hoping it's going to be all up and running by tomorrow morning, Mitch. But um, tell me a little bit about, uh, Mitch is also a children's ministry, uh, is also in charge of our children's ministry family. and family ministries, yeah, and uh, he's uploaded some, some cool things onto the web. So would you just tell us about that, Mitch, and then uh, let our parents know how they can download that stuff. Okay, so it's really nice and uh, it's really simple. If you go to the church website, you can actually download the lesson that we actually already have planned for this week. 
week. Um, and we're going to keep doing that week after week. There's coloring pages for the kids. There's lessons plans for the kids, things you can talk to your kids about. Uh, oddly enough, this week is actually about leadership and uh, what it means to be a leader and following and doing fishers of men. So it's great and it's a wonderful thing that we can share with our kids. Um, so take the time, go online, uh, download the message. There's questions you can ask your kids. There is, um, like I said, the coloring pages and some activities that you can do with your kids in regards to this. So it, we really want to encourage that even though we are apart right now, that we still want to be together as a family, still have the same lessons that we had. Um, and we're going to continue on with the lesson plan that we have right now. Do something. Talk to your kids about it because they've been really engaged and have really loved this lesson plan that we've been doing. I'm going to be sharing YouTube videos, uh, some of the lessons and music videos that we've been working on, um, all on the actual news page that's actually on our website. So keep an eye out for things to come. I'm also setting up a email address for parents and kids to keep in touch with me because I want to hear how you guys are all doing as well. So it, it, it's be a wonderful way to keep in touch with you guys and I really look forward to connecting your kids even at a distance because uh, I love all of your guys' kids out there and to have pictures or updates or how everybody's spending all their time it would be wonderful to see. So uh, thank you so much for taking part in this this morning and make sure you keep uh, coming back to the website regularly for updates for this guys. Thank you, Mitch. At, um, at, this, at this time, I'm going to ask um, our uh, accountant, uh, Stuart, who looks after all the finances in the, in the church, and just to talk a little bit about, uh, some people have asked me, can we still donate it to church? Yes, you can. And there's some ways that uh, you can do that. So Stuart, uh, why don't you come on up and join us? And I'm going to have actually a little uh, page also uh, for that at this time, all right? So go ahead, Stuart, and just talk a little bit about the finances. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. One Life Church, we have a number of giving options. One, our website, onelifechurch.ca. Click on the giving tab and follow the instructions there. Two, text the word give, G-I-V-E, using the telephone number 587-400. 0950 and follow the instructions there as well. A third way is giving online using e transfer from your bank account to info at onelifechurch.ca, I N F O at onelifechurch.ca. A fourth way, we are willing to stop by your home and pick up a check if you'd like to give that way. And a fifth way, mail your check into One Life Church. So One Life Church, 501 40th Street South. Our postal code is T1J4M1. Thank you for your faithful support. That's the way. All right, thank you, Stuart. And at this time, as we close up, I would like, to, I would like for Rose to, um, and just to uh, read Psalm 91. And uh, we wanna thank you for uh, joining us today as we spent this time together over here. So Rose, why don't you go ahead, uh, read Psalm 91. It's one of my more favorite Psalms. And so go ahead and read that. Thank you. So Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, says the Lord. 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, dear. And as we're about to close, I just want to speak a blessing over you. I want to speak a blessing from Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. And so as we close, I just say this, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Thank bless you, you for joining us today. God bless you.